We are reading The Road to Paris, Chapter 33, Gone Fishing. The worst thing about little brothers, well, not the worst thing, but one of them, was that they sometimes needed looking after, and Paris was not always in the mood. Her teacher had saddled her with homework, and Paris was anxious to get it done so she could enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Paris, Mrs. Lincoln called up to her, go with Jordan to the park for a little while. He wants to catch a tadpole for show and tell, and I don't want him falling in the water. Why can't David take him, Paris asked. David has, David's got baseball practice. Besides, I asked you. Paris groaned, but what about my homework? Finish it later. There's plenty of time before dinner. Oh, well, thought Paris, it was worth a try. Out of excuses, she set her spelling list aside and stomped downstairs. Come on, Jordan, she called. Jordan came running, happy to get his wish. Outside, he tried to run ahead of Paris, but she had a death grip on his hand. She wasn't about to get into trouble for letting him run out into the street. Once they reached the park at the foot of the hill, she dropped his hand. Be careful with that jar, Jordan, said Paris. If you break it, you won't have a home for your tadpole. Okay, said Jordan. He kneeled by the brook and began searching the water. A couple of times he thought he had something, but it turned out to be a rock glistening in the sunlight. This was going to take a while. There was a park bench nearby, but a pale, freckle-faced girl with a shock of red hair sat on one end of it. Paris sat on the other end, planning to ignore the girl. Another white girl, thought Paris, no surprise. Except for the Lincolns and two other families, everyone in the neighborhood was white. It was the same at school. Paris was the only black kid in her grade. In Ossining, if Paris saw more than two or three black faces at one time, it was at church, and few of the kids at Star Bethlehem went to Claremont. She was friendly with a couple of kids in the choir, but she only saw them once a week. So Paris realized if she was ever going to have any friends on her block or in her school, likely as not, they'd be white. But she sure wasn't shopping around for one. Not after Ashley. Paris swung her legs over the side of the bench, wondering how long it was going to take for Jordan to find his stupid tadpole. Find one yet, she called to him. Jordan shook his head from side to side. What's he looking for? asked the freckled girl. Tadpole, said Paris. For school, you know, show and tell. The girl nodded. With her chin, she pointed to a little boy a few feet away. Stick insects, same thing, show and tell. I'll be glad when he's big enough to come to the park on his own. Paris looked at Jordan and thought, me too, but she didn't say it. I'm Sienna, Sienna Warren, and that's PJ. We just moved here. Who asked you, thought Paris. Still, she didn't want to be rude. I'm Paris, and that's Jordan, she said, hoping that would be the end of it. But Sienna launched into a series of questions. Where do you live? How old are you? What school do you go to? Paris answered each question, thinking it would be the last. When she could see it wasn't, Paris stood up, called for Jordan, and told him it was time to go. Luckily for Paris, he finally caught his tadpole and was ready to leave. Their exit, exit was anything but speedy, though. Jordan held his tadpole jar with both hands, careful not to drop it, as he inched toward Paris. Ugh, thought Paris, who couldn't get out of that park fast enough. Little brothers, what a pain. See you later, called Sienna, maybe at school. Paris shook her head and kept walking. Some folks can't take a hint. Well, that's the end of chapter 33, and I guess we can all probably relate to Paris being gun-shy when you've been hurt by someone that you thought were your friend.
But let's see how this adventure goes next in chapter 34. So come and join me in chapter 34. We are reading The Road to Paris, chapter 34, Me and My Shadow. The following Monday, Paris was sitting in the school lunchroom, eating her tuna salad sandwich, when Sienna slipped into the empty space beside her. Hi, said Sienna, grinning. I saw you here all by yourself, and I figured I'd keep you company. You mind? You again, thought Paris her mouth too full to speak. She finished chewing, swallowed, and was about to say she'd rather be alone when Sienna launched right into a story before Paris could get a word in. Paris sighed, shaking her head. Go on, Miss Freckles, she thought. Jabber all you want to. I'm not listening. So Sienna talked enough for the both of them, and Paris finished her lunch in silence nodding every now and then to keep Sienna from bugging her with questions. The week closed with a parent-teacher buffet. The principal called it the last meet and greet of the school year, a chance for parents, teachers, and students to celebrate the end of the year. Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln were there with David, Jordan, and Paris. The minute they got there, David took off, looking for his buddies, dragging Jordan behind him. Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln chatted with a couple of teachers, and Paris stood nearby, sipping lemonade by herself. From the corner of her eye, Paris noticed Sienna hurrying in her direction. Rushing to keep up was a tall man with the same shock of red hair as Sienna, and an equally tall lady who was blonde. Must be Mr. and Mrs. Freckles, thought Paris. What do they want? Hi, Paris, said Sienna, bubbling as a cold root beer. And Mr. Lincoln, Mrs. Lincoln, right? This is my mom and dad. I'm Jake, said Mr. Warren, and this is my wife, Kendra. James and Esther, said Mr. Lincoln. The adults shook hands all around. Then Mr. Warren bent down until he was his daughter's height. Hi there, you must be Paris, he said holding out his hand. Paris looked at it, hesitating. She searched his face, his eyes, and found not an ounce of hatred. Slowly, Paris slid her small hand into his big paw. He gave her hand a warm shake, then stood up. Sienna tells me she hopes the two of you are going to be good friends. So it's nice to finally meet you, he said, and your parents. Paris glanced up at Mrs. Lincoln, who gave her a secret wink. Paris nodded, turning to Sienna. The girl's smile had faded a little. She looked as if she might be holding her breath. Good friends, huh? thought Paris. I don't know. The adults chatted with one another while Paris thought long and hard. She thought about the world of hurt Ashley had caused her. Then she thought about what Mrs. Lincoln had said. Take every person as she comes. Judge each one by her actions. So far, Sienna's actions have been fine. Surprising as a spring rain, maybe, but just as soft, too. Paris polished off her lemonade and headed back to the refreshment table across the room. Midway, she stopped and turned around. Well, you coming or not, she said to Sienna. I'm about to die of thirst here. Sienna's smile curved as wide and bright as a crescent moon. She bolted from her father's side and caught up with her friend. The two girls wandered around together for the rest of the evening. Well, that's the end of chapter 34. Really a nice surprise for Paris to have found a new friend. And that just goes to show us that we have to keep an open mind and heart to new things. Well, we're going to continue on our journey in chapter 35. So join me next time in chapter 35.